This message comes to you from Withenshaw Community Church, Manchester. We hope that you are inspired and challenged by God's Word. Morning. How's everyone feeling this morning? Salty. Good, good, good. You know what? Fabian did such a great job last week, didn't he? Telling a story. I'm like, I, I can't do that. So let me just show a video and illustrate what I'm about to preach. So uh, that, that was a little bit of a video about what we're going to share this morning. Can we just pray? I'm really excited about this morning. I feel like there's a, there's a word that God's put in my heart that can speak to all of us this morning. So let us just pray. Father, we just want to pray this morning. We want to honor you this morning. Father, I just want to pray that you use me this morning. Father, I just want to pray that uh, you prepare our hearts, Father. That you prepare our hearts to receive your word this morning. Father, I just want to pray against any, any, any distractions, Father, that you remove it in Jesus' name. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, so for those who like to take notes, we've got some um, uh, outlines that you can just follow along. And if you want to make notes, just ask one of the ushers and they can hand that to you. So let's uh, read the, the word from this morning. So Matthew 5 verses 13 to 16. And it reads, You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled on the feet as worthless. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, the lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now this morning, I just want to focus on the, uh, verse 13. And that reads, you are the salt. You are the salt of this earth. And I feel like this day and age, we have kind of lost the value of what salt is. The minute we say salt, you think of high blood pressure and then resulting to heart attack and all sorts of stuff. Uh, we kind of lost the value of what salt is. You know, any restaurant you go to, I mean, it comes right on the table, isn't it? It's not, you don't have to pay extra money to get salt. It's just part of the thing that comes along. Any house you go to is on the kitchen table, right? You go to Asda. It's the cheapest thing you can buy. 27 pence for 750 gram of table salt. And I think when Jesus is saying you are the salt, this day and age, in our generation, we automatically think, what, I'm the salt? What does that even mean? I mean, that has no value whatsoever. When we look at when Jesus was talking about you are the salt, when we look at the history, we can really learn a lot from what, what actually salt was. The Greeks called salt divine. That's what they called it, divine. The Romans, the Romans held the sun and the salt at the highest value. Why? Because one gives life. And the other preserves life. Did you know that Roman soldiers were actually paid in salt? They were paid in salt. And that was such a high value. Did you know that the word salary actually comes from a Greek word, salaria? And actually what it means is it's, it's taken from the word salaria, sal means salt. That's where we get the word salary from. How many like to get paid? And that's, that's literally what it means. And that's how the Romans were paid back in the day. They were paid in salt, the Roman soldiers. When you went to, into a, a marketplace, that was one of the highest values. Salt was very expensive. It was very essential. It was a measured word. It was the highest value possession, right? So here we have Jesus using this illustration. The disciples really understood what Jesus was saying. It wasn't like us today when we say, you are the salt, and all this automatically you think, oh, high blood pressure, right? They actually understood what Jesus was saying. They understood what Jesus was saying. And that one statement, Jesus pours value into 
his disciples and the people around him. Now, historians and theologians believe that around 80,000 people were on the Mount site. I want you to picture this, right? Jesus is there, right in the middle of the greatest sermon ever preached, right? The Sermon on the Mount. Jesus turns and looks at his disciples. Then he looks at the broken. He looks at the, uh, the, 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 the poor, the uneducated, those who were left out of the society. He looks them in the eye and he says, you know what? You are the salt. You are the salt. You are the salt. Simply in just one statement, in one statement, Jesus is literally pouring value over their heads. He puts respect back into their heads. He puts dignity in their soul. Can I, can I say, he didn't say you can become the salt. He never said that. Did he say if you do A, B, and C, and D, then you can become salt? He didn't say that, did he? He said you are are the salt. That's a fact. You are the salt of this earth. I love that because that's a fact. You are the salt. You see, when we receive the Holy Spirit, something significant takes place. You know, I, I don't know what I would be without Holy Spirit. I mean, I tried, I tried to change my life around so many times. But when, it, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and when you receive the Holy Spirit, you know what? Something significant takes place. You don't even need to try. The Holy Spirit will do something in you that no man can ever do. He will change us from inside out. That's a beautiful thing. You are the salt. You are the salt. But you know what? He doesn't leave it there. Jesus doesn't leave it there, does he? He goes on to the next statement. He says, what if salt loses his saltiness? What good is it, right? What good is it? And trust me, back in the day, that's what used to happen. They would literally throw it with the other, other rubbish. They would just throw it out. Because it's good for nothing, right? It's just good for nothing. And Jesus is challenging them, saying, you know what? You are the salt. God created you for a purpose. You are here for a reason. You are not an accident. You are here for a reason. You are the salt. But you know what? If you... Put me aside. If you walk away from me, you will lose your saltiness. You will lose what God created. You have a choice to make, right? You either accept him or reject him. But if you reject him, you lose that saltiness. Jesus is saying, I've given you extraordinary worth. When you accept me in your heart, when you allow Jesus to fill your heart and you become Jesus-centered, spirit-filled, something significant takes place. But when you walk away from him, all of that is set aside. All of that is set aside. You lose the word. You lose your saltiness. And he's warning us, don't, don't, don't allow that to happen. When you have faith in the name but not in action, you say you're a follower, but no one can tell. There needs to be something about us that shows people that you know what, there is a saltiness in you. It's not an artificial faith. It's, a, it's, it's, it's actually authentic faith. But can I, can I say this? It's not a series of do's and don'ts. Don't get it wrong. Christianity is not a religion. I always say that because it's not a religion. I come from a background where I was, I was um, you know, from a Muslim background where we had to do A, B, and C, and D to get to God. But Christianity is not like that. There are not series of things that you need to do in order to become. It's a relationship. Christianity is a relationship with a living God. With a living God. It's a relationship. And when you allow him to come inside of you, nothing can stop you from changing. Nothing. Nothing. And and, and all it takes is for you to say, God, I made a decision. I made a choice for you to come and I want you to change me. He will never force himself on you. He will never change you unless you allow him to change you, right? And that's what the Holy Spirit does. But we need to allow him. We need to allow him. Listen, our God is a redeemer. And he loves and he desires to redeem us. I think Jesus is literally in this one simple statement. He's making a statement on identity, who we are. 
you know what? Your identity, God created you. You are salt. You are salt. Don't allow the enemy to tell you otherwise. You are salt. God created you here for a purpose, for a reason. Let him in. Let him in. You are important to the creator, to his mission, to his purpose on this earth. All he wants you to do is just follow him and you become salty. You know what? I was looking at this illustration that I saw this scientist did. And um, they took out one ton of water, seawater, from different locations. They, and, and, and literally what they did is evaporated this one ton of water to see how much salt they would get. And, and they literally took one ton of, of, of seawater from the uh, Pacific Ocean... And they managed to get 79 pounds of salt from that one ton. And then they went to the Atlantic Ocean and literally did the same thing. And they managed to get only two extra pounds. So 81 pounds of salt they managed to get from that one ton of water. But you know what? They went to the Dead Sea and that was completely different. One ton of water created... Uh, 500 pounds of salt. That's big difference, right? You see, this little statistic shows us that whatever you go in different parts of the earth and you take different samples, there are different amounts of salt in different parts of uh, uh, water. I think, I believe, honestly, I believe it's the same for our Christian, in our Christianity. We all have different amount of salt level. We all have different salt level. And what I want to do today, I just want us to look at a few of the characteristics of salt. Okay, can we do that? And I think that will help us this morning. So, number one, number one, salt is a healing agent. Salt is a healing agent. Salt has been the essential part of medicine. If you look at the uh, medicine, if you studied medicine, you can all agree with me. You look at the uh, old manuscripts, you can see that salt has been part of uh, medicine for thousands of years. Used as a remedy, as a supportive measure, treatment, or even a, a preventive measures. You can take it internally, but you can ab- apply it externally as well. Have you ever had a sore mouth? Sore mouth or even a sore throat. Have you ever tried goggling salt water? Because that's what they tell you to do, right? Goggle some salt water. It burns, but something happens. It starts to heal the actual wound. It was a couple of, um, couple of uh, years ago. Um, I, we used to go swimming in the sea a lot of time when I was younger. After a long time not going to the sea and, and, and going for, to swim... I remember (laughs) I jumped into the water, and next thing I know, my skin was just literally burning. And and I remembered, wow, you know, as as you grow older, obviously, you start getting scars and all sorts of stuff. And and literally, what the salt water was doing uh, was was causing this irritation on my skin. But I'm telling you, uh, in, in a couple of days, I felt so different because my body, my skin, I felt like it was restored. It was healed. And um, it, it's just significant. Salt always been used as part of medicine. Matthew 10, verse 7 to 8, it reads, And as you go, as you go, preach, saying, Kingdom of heaven is at hand. How many know the end times is near? Heal the sick. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. What is Jesus saying? You are the salt. Go and heal. Go and heal. Because why? Because you are the salt. You are the salt. Go and heal. Go and cast out. Cast out demons. Heal the sick. You see, here's the thing about salt though. Like I was saying, it stings. It stings, right, when, it, when it's applied to a, a part of your body that's, uh, that's hurting, right? In the same way, you know, when you want to become used by God, you have to step out of your comfort zone. 
You got to step out of that comfort zone. It doesn't come easy, you know, to go to pray for someone who is sick. You need to step out of your comfort zone. It's uncomfortable. But as you step out of your comfort zone, you will see a significant. There are times that we need to step into situations. One thing you need to remember, the sting is always acknowledgement that there's a healing taking place. The sting is always acknowledgement that there's a healing taking place. Number two, salt creates a thirst. Salt creates a thirst. And again, uh, when you look at the medical commentary, it uh, says this, the key function of salt is to create thirst. Without salt in the food, you won't take too much water, right? As a result, you could even dehydrate or far worse, you can even die or have severe sicknesses as a result of lack of water. So what salt does, it creates thirst. It creates thirst. In, uh, in athletics, in a lot of the sports actually, but mainly athletics, in, 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 and I was doing a bit of study on, uh, on, 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 on that, and I saw how in America especially, in, a, in the summertime, um, are into sports, are encouraged to take on a salt tablet, and literally what this does, it creates the thirst within them. Uh, that it, it helps them to drink more water. Because, you know, sometimes you just don't want to drink water. But your body needs it. Your body needs it. And you just don't want to take water. So what, what they do is they take these tablets and it helps them during the summer to take on more water, to drink more water. The other thing is, I've noticed as well, I don't, know, I don't know about you, but whenever you go to McDonald's and you get those, um, the fries, they're good, aren't they? I think, I think McDonald's always does loads of salt. And what does it do? It makes you thirsty for more, right? Have you ever tried taking just one? You know, I've, 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 there have been times that, you know, we buy some, some, some fries and uh, the kids have it. And I'm like, no, I'll be all right. I, I won't take. But you take that one. What does it do? <laughs> First is the smell. Then is the saltiness that uh, in your mouth. It, it creates this thirst for more, right? You just want to have another one, right? And that's designed, salt is designed to create a thirst for more. It's created the thirst for more. So salt is this catalyst for athletes to help the body know that it needs life-giving water. But also salt creates this thirst for more appetites. Do you hear what I'm saying this morning? I want, I want us to examine our, ourselves this morning. I want us to examine ourselves this morning. People around us, when they see us, when they see us, do they thirst for more of Jesus? Do they actually thirst for more of Jesus? Because Jesus says, you are the salt of this earth. We need, to, we need to examine ourselves sometimes. The people around us, when we, when we hang out with people, do they, do, they, do they thirst for more of God? Do they more thirst for more of Jesus? Number three, salt is a preservative. Salt is a preservative. You know, back in the day, they didn't have fridges, uh, they didn't have freezer or fridge or any of that, right? So what they would do, they would get a piece of meat or, or fish and they were coated with salt. And what salt did, it preserved this meat, right, this protein. So as a result, it could last for longer. That's what salt does, preserves, preserves, preserves. This is the idea. There are times where God calls us to protect it and preserve his goodness in, in situations. There are times where you're faced with situations in your life that God wants you to preserve his goodness. You might be at a workplace and, and you hear your colleagues talking bad about one another or even, even far more about God. What are you going to do? You're just going to walk away or are you going to preserve his goodness? Are you Are going to change the atmosphere? You see, God wants us to be the salt. You are the salt. You know, it, it might be even your family. Your family have an argument. Are you going to add to the fire or are you going to be the salt that preserves God's goodness? Are you going to change the atmosphere? Are you going to bring peace in that situation? That's what you are called to do. You're called to be a peacemaker. Or you, doing, you see someone doing wrong at work. Do you bring correction or do you, do you just walk away from it. You are the salt that needs to preserve this world from corruption. We can't, we can't allow 
us being dragged into corruption. We need to preserve this world from corruption. Number four, and, and this is where I want to end my point this morning, and this is my favorite, salt adds flavor. Did you know that? Salt brings out the flavor. You see, salt adds flavor to whatever it touches. It adds flavor, and I want to finish on this point. Salt adds flavor to whatever it touches. You are the salt of this earth. So you're supposed to release flavor into this world. You're not called to follow the others. You're supposed to be the salt that brings out the flavor. We, we, we have a master chef in the house. Can we give it up for Sister Portia? <laughs> master chef. And, and I've seen you a lot of times carrying this toolbox, right? Am I right to say in your toolbox you got loads of different ingredients? But as a good chef, you always carry salt with you, right? Oh, yes. You know what salt does? Have you ever tried cooking meat, like frying a steak and not put salt on it? It tastes horrible. But the same meat, all you put, a little bit of salt on that, it takes out that flavor. It's just amazing. You see, what it does is salt takes out the flavor, sucks out the flavor. It's the same meat that you frying. So every good chef knows whenever they're in the kitchen that they need salt. You see, you are the ingredient. You are the ingredient to bring flavor to the people and also situations around you. We often think the main purpose of salt is to bring saltiness, but that's not true. The main purpose of salt is to pull out the natural flavor from whatever is touching. Salt extracts that flavor that's already in the food. So as we grow and mature in our Christian walk, God is pulling out whatever is inside of us. God is pulling out whatever flavor that's inside of us. There is good food in you. Don't insult God by seeking yourself or seeing yourself as worthless. You are worth it. God created you unique. He sees you and he knows there is a purpose within you. Never look down at God's creation. You're wonderful. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. You are a chosen generation. That's what it says. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. That you may proclaim and praises of him. Who called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. I want to remind you. You are a chosen generation. God has called you out of darkness. God has called all of us out of darkness. And we're now into the light. You are the salt. You are the light. We don't have enough time to go to the next part, but you are the light too. You know, God is in you. He's on you and he's in you. The goal of salt isn't to make the object more like itself. That's another thing. Jesus says in John 10, he came to give life abundantly. You know, when we look at salt, there's so many different kinds of salt, right? you got sea salt, regular salt, black salt. There's all these different salts. And they all have different flavors and tastes. God has made you uniquely and wonderfully. And you don't need to be like anyone else. You be you. You be you. And be proud of it too. Don't try to change yourself. Because God knew what he was doing. He made you just the way he wanted it. He has a specific plan for your life. When you're salty, your words, your action, and your life, when it touches somebody else's, it doesn't make them more like you. It makes them more like themselves. It does. I'm sure I shared this before with you. As God was opening my heart to receive him, I remember there were times where I had this group of Christian friends and they were different. Honestly, they were so different. I would be going through the roughest time, but they, they always had the right words to say. You know what? Whenever they came, whenever they, they would just change the atmosphere, they would give me hope, you know. And it was as a result of seeing these guys, seeing what they had, what opened my eyes to see, you know what? There must be a, a, a God who, <laughs> these this guys are different. And I want what they have. And that's what salt does. 
brings out flavor. They didn't try to change me. They didn't do any of that. They were just being themselves. And that just added and, and helped and received God, received salvation. When the Spirit comes in you, it doesn't make you better than anybody else. That's another thing. He makes you better than yourself. Better than yourself, not better than anyone else. Don't ever try and compare yourself. I already said this. It isn't about a checklist of doing this and that. It's just allowing God to come into your heart. He called us on a mission. We're here on a mission. We are called on a mission. We need to allow God to be the chef. We are the salt, and he brings the food together. We just add value. We just add value. Whoever is in your sphere of influence, you're there for a reason. In your workplace, you're there for a reason. In your schools, you're there for a reason. You need to change the atmosphere. Be the salt. Be the salt. There's no need to profile yourself or compare yourself with others. Am I a regular salt? Am I sea salt? Am I this salt? Am I that salt? You know what? Each one of us have got a specific flavor. And just God knew what flavor he wanted you to be. There's a Pastor Mike flavor. There's a Pastor Mary's flavor. Pastor Terrence's flavor. There's a Crystal flavor. There's Justice flavor. You know, there's a Bursley in the background flavor. You know, God made you the way he wants you to be. Don't try to change yourself. Feel confident in who God created you to be. Never disrespect him by try to look at yourself down. Always be encouraged. You see, God's presence is here. Sometimes we feel like, you know what, on Sunday morning when I come to church, that's when I feel most godly because I come to this sanctuary and I feel like, God is near because we're singing worship and we're hearing the word. And then when I leave this place, I become this different person. Church is you. God is in you. God goes with you wherever you go. So when you leave this place, know that God is with you. God is with you. As you go into civic, know that God is there with you. As you go into your workplace, know that God is there with you. God is with us all the time. The Spirit of God is always with you. Psalm 113 Verses 7 to 12, it reads, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost uh, most part of the sea, even there your hands shall lead me, lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be the light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as a day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. When you leave this place, know that you're not leaving God's presence. His presence goes with you. Psalm 34 verse 8, oh, taste. And see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Put your trust in him this morning. When your co-worker is having a problem, have the confidence that you are the salt. Bring a change in that situation. Don't walk away from it. Bring a change in that situation. Wherever you are, you're called to be the salt of this earth. When your family is fighting or arguing, will you bring peace? That's the glimpse of saltiness right there. When you bring peace in situations, where you don't walk away from it. Galatians 2 verse 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. That's a glimpse of saltiness. I wonder, are you willing to step out? Do you understand your value? With every eye closed, every head bowed, I just want you to examine your heart. I just want you to take a couple of seconds and ask God, 
God, I want to I want to I want to examine myself. I want to invite you into my heart, into my life. I want you to use me. I want you to use me. I am the salt of this earth. With every eyes closed, every head bowed, I want to give you an opportunity this morning. You know what? Jesus said, you are the salt. You are the salt. You know what? God wants to have this relationship with you. You see, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we open our hearts and say, God, come into my heart, we invite him in, something significant takes place. The Spirit of God comes into us, and he's the one that brings the change. But you have to let him in. With every eyes closed, every head bowed, I want to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. You can, you can know him today. Don't leave this place the same. If that's you, I just want you to raise your hand. And what we do, we just pray for you. God wants to have that relationship with you. You might be here and you might have backslidden. Don't leave this place the same. With every eyes closed, head bowed, if that's you, just raise your hand and we can pray for you. Heavenly Father, we lift up your name this morning. We thank you for the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. So that we can have life and life to the abundance. Father, I want to pray that right now. That you would step out. That you help us to step out. Help us to step out and begin to understand what you called us to be. Help us to be the salt of the earth. Give us the strength this week to live knowing that your presence is with us. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. We hope you've been inspired and challenged by this message. For more information about Withenshaw Community Church Manchester, please visit withenshawcommunitychurch.org.